would like to thank you guys for being here today. I'm Kate McGee, and uh, I'm a product manager with Canvas. And I've been there for about three years now, and given that we're about five years old, that kind of makes me a bit of a veteran, which is crazy. Um, so today we're going to talk about our roadmap and uh, what Canvas has planned. And uh, there's a few things that I like as much as a plan. Um, and that kind of translates into what we do at Canvas. And this makes me kind of remember um, a situation in which I uh, was just recently out of college and had, uh, had been saving up and had the opportunity to go on a, uh, on a trip. And so this kind of is, okay, we've got a big opportunity. What is it that, that I want to do? And that's when you're kind of looking at, well, what are my goals? Um, what am I trying to do? And uh, something that I'd always uh, loved was art history. I mean, I was basically, um, you know, I had read Da Vinci Code, so basically I was an art historian at that point. Um, but in, in reality, um, I, had, I was about one course short from um, having my art history minor, and so it was a passion of mine, but um, wasn't uh, where I had focused, but I, I had, you know, taken all these classes and had never actually seen any of the works of art that I had learned about, and so uh, that became my goal. How can I see the art that I uh, love and have uh, enjoyed learning about? And so, you know, I can go to London, I can go to Paris, I can go to Rome, and, uh, you know, I focused a lot on um, Renaissance to modern art, and so uh, Rome became the place to go. Um, so now, you know, I've, I've uh, picked my goal, I've picked where I want to go, and so now uh, I need to kind of think and, and focus where I'm going to spend my time now that I have the goal. How do I achieve that the most? Well, there's uh, 64 different museums in Rome. <laughs> there's uh, countless historical sites and ruins and uh, different fountains. I think I've counted like over 24 different fountains that you can go visit. So what am I going to do? Because uh, I only have a limited amount of time. Um, so then it's, uh, I have to take the time to go look and see, well, what was my favorite pieces of art that I wanted to see? And so I'm going through my textbook. I'm marking the pages that I want to see the most. I'm uh, you know, heading to the bookstore to get my Lonely Planet and my Rick Steves and marking my favorite pages. And I'm talking to friends and um, specifically a friend who had spent a summer doing an exchange in Rome. And I'm gathering these different information and uh, trying to pick out what to do. And I kept uh, coming across a similar um, museum. And it hadn't been on my list. And, uh, but there was a work of art there that I loved, which was Apollo and Daphne by Bernini. And, you know, so I, I happen to see that Rick Steve says, you know, while this is an out of the way um, gallery that you can go to, uh, the Borghese Gallery, um, it's one of, it's, it's like a fantasy land of art and, um, you know, the height of Renaissance. And then, um, you know, and then also talking with my friend, she's saying, you know, the, the thing that I loved the most was getting to go to this gallery. It wasn't crowded. I got to really spend the time with art, and I really got to um, experience it. And so, um, I, I, based on that in fact, I uh, chose to go to this gallery, the Borghese Gallery. And I mean, it was just such an experience. Um, you know, taking in, taking, getting to see this, this, this is actually somebody's house. This is the Borghese Villa. Somebody lived here. This is crazy. And, um, <laughs> you know, there's these intricate gardens outside of it. And um, inside has this uh, sculpture that's by Bernini, and it's Apollo and Daphne. And uh, it's, it's incredible. So Daphne is running away from Apollo. Um, and she has been struck by uh, an arrow by Cupid that actually makes it so she like, can't fall in love uh, or doesn't want to. And uh, so she's, as she's trying to escape him, uh, she prays to her father to um, help her escape. And he does this by transforming her into a tree. And so you can see there, there's these, her hands are turning into leaves and her feet are turning, you know, it's this bark. And, uh, her hair is these branches, and it's just so intricate and so beautiful. And uh, you know, just thinking about all the options of things that I could have gone seeing, there's a million, but 
um, getting to go to this gallery was a special experience. And, you know, that happened because of taking the time to figure out what my goals were, uh, trying to decide where I could spend my time, doing the research, and talking with people. And, you know, that's not too dissimilar from what we do at campus. Um, our goal is to simplify teaching and learning. And we do that through technology. And there's a lot of different things that you can do to do that. So we, we try and focus on what our, um, how we can do that through the features that we build. And the way in which we figure out what that functionality is is through doing research and through gaining insights from our users, and that's you. And so uh, as we look at what we're doing with Canvas, um, I wanted to kind of have that idea for you all of, of, of how that process works. Um, so let's talk about what's new um, with Canvas. So uh, I'm going to talk about some things that are for both our K-12 and higher ed customers. Uh, one of the things that we're working on is a parent mobile app. Um, this app is to be able to help uh, parents and observers, guardians, um, with helping make sure that their students are uh, turning in their homework, see how their grades are doing, and get alerts about uh, missed homework and things like that, as well as provide more uh, permissions for our administrators. We're also adding in the ability to do weighted grading periods. Um, we know that there are, are periods of uh, when a grading period needs to be, you know, 50% of the grade, or sorry, 50% of the grade, uh, and other parts are going to be 25 and 25, and we know that we need to be able to offer that to our students and to our teachers, so we're going to be having, um, adding in weighted grading periods. Uh, and something that I know that you guys experience here is uh, the need for students to be able to access their content when they are off campus. Um, they may be in a rural area, they may be off on a reservation, they may be in the prison system, and our offline uh, content is going to enable these users to be able to download their content in HTML so that they can access that content and make it very clear for them as well when that, uh, when that, when there is content within the course that is going to be something that's a link to another site that they're going to need access to the internet for. So hopefully that will be helpful for you all. Um, in, in, our, in an effort to kind of help our teachers continue to support their students, we're adding in student context trays. Student context trays will, will be available per student. They give you some analytics about the performance uh, in relationship to their course and to their class, uh, as well as most recent uh, uh, submitted assignments, and, um, and are available and allow quick and easy access to their personal page. So let's talk about what's coming up soon. And this is uh, when we talk about kind of the features and things that we've, we've heard that you, that you need. One of those is mobile access. We know that the need to be able to access your course and, and students and content is uh, ever becoming more mobile. So with the new teacher app, you're going to be able to do um, more easy communication with your students. You're going to be able to do on the fly con uh, grading as well as updating to your content. We're also trying to make it easier for new students to come on. We know that every semester there are new adjunct coming in. Oh, we have a question. Yeah, so is that last one going to replace the speed grader and the current app? How is that going to be different? Does the current app work on iPhone? The plan there is to bring speed, speed grader into the teacher app. So that will be available there. Uh, we all know that you guys love speed grader. I, I love it too when I've taught. When I've taught. Um, our new instructor guide is going to, uh, like, we're, like I was saying, when we have teachers that are coming in, uh, adjunct or you know, new teachers, and it's, it's a lot to ramp up on an LMS. And we know it's a lot of information to take on as well as new students and new content. So we're trying to make that easier by when they come in here having intuitive uh, empty states so that they can see, here's what you do here, here's where you can get extra content, here's how you use this. And something I think you guys will be really excited about is our blueprint courses. Now sometimes you've heard of these talked about as master courses, um, or um, 
And so the use case for this is you have a course that you want to be able to uh, replicate and use in multiple different courses. So you have a biology class, you have a senior professor who has taken the time to curate the content, and you have multiple adjunct coming in who want to teach the same content. You're going to be able to take that course, uh, uh, provision that content for them, and push out changes throughout the semester for that blueprint course. So um, with that, um, I'd like to turn it over to Renee to talk about how you can get involved. And that's really when we're talking about that insight that comes from you, this is how you can uh, provide that and get involved. All right, thank you. Well, most of you know me, uh, Renee Carney. I'm now a community manager here at Instructure. And Scott touched a little bit on the community and the share idea space, so I won't get into a lot of detail about it. But what I do want to touch on is a recent change that we made. So I love that Kate talked about having a plan because when we surveyed you, our users, and asked what you wanted changed in this area of our community, one of the biggest feedback items we got was that you want to know what we're working on so that you can help um, put your energy and efforts into what's currently allocated for. So we still have that open forum on the right hand side where you can submit any idea and we read all of them. Coaches also do an awesome job reading all of them. But here in the center now you'll see areas of our roadmap that we're putting out public for you to interact with. And as Scott touched on, if you click into explore and contribute, you'll see what stage that project is in and how you can get involved, whether it's interacting on ideas, completing surveys. Um, right now, Canvas Teacher app is about to open up a public focus group with a beta, so you can sign up to access that and, and test it out. Quizzes.next will be opening up a beta soon. The sign up, however, just closed for that. But this is a great space to follow, because whenever we put out a new uh, priority, we put out an announcement as well. So you'll get an announcement if you follow that space. So Kate, you want to come back up, see if we have any questions? <laughs> Jerry. So you have the roadmap there. Where, where do these fall on the timeline? Uh, whenever we're looking at our roadmap and what we're showing, it's things that we're looking to do in the next 6 to 12 months. Sorry, with the what courses? The blueprint courses. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure. I, I may have missed it. Um, is it real time updating from the blueprint courses, or is it a push out, like a one time push? Right. So the question is about blueprint courses. Are they um, real time, um, or are they a push? And uh, uh, my understanding is that we're looking at a push model. Okay. It's good. But like, if it were real time updating, that would probably fix our issue. With We should talk more. <laughs> I'd love to hear more. <laughs> On your offline content, um, <coughs> has it been thought about being able to monitor the student's activity offline so when it's uploaded, it can be registered? So, us as admins, if we have an <coughs> issue where a student says, I've been working on something, that we can. So, there's it does something offline to you know, account for online so we can monitor that. Yeah, so the question is um, uh, when the student comes back after they've uh, done work on the offline content and they're talking about, you know, it's something I've been working on, what's, what information is coming back to the admin so that they can respond to that? I don't know if, if you're familiar with anything on that. Okay, so it looks like neither Renee or I have an answer to that question. It's a good one and we should get more information for you. Because I know like the app, we've had issues where the students have said I've tried to submit an assignment. So we as admins have been asking to do some investigation of online activities. So if they use the app, there's no, I mean, we don't tell the students we can't dictate that. We wait and I always give them kind of like, how did you try to do this? And don't give them a handout saying, you know, if you use the app, I can't tell. But it would be a, a nice feature to be able to do it. That's great. Yeah. Um, I can definitely relay that to uh, our team member who's working on that, make sure that they're considering it. Thank you. Yeah. That's a tough question, but I know at one point when we were doing something 
acting up like Angel or whatever it was, who are all washing their food up, the coffee, uh, whatever they like. Now you're doing it now, but my understanding is you're like a contractor or something like that. You're providing the services for all the stuff to do in Washington State for food college and all that. One that's your service, contract, or whatever, that, that kind of thing ends with us. So the question is, is when does the Canvas contract end? Yeah, that's a good question. I would guess that your campus admin would have the answer. I'm not sure what they what it is. I'm sorry. Never ending. <laughs> that's my hope. <laughs> Yeah, just to repeat that, it sounds like you guys just renewed and you've got another three years on that contract. And then, and then the community colleges in any, any way will be obliged to do an RFP at, at, you know, for the, the whatever happens after that, which doesn't, which doesn't mean that we're going to move away from cabinet, cabinet, but it means that we have to do an RFP because that's what yeah. the state laws are. It wouldn't matter, I thought one thing that I think that is maybe important to note there is that Canvas um, participates in the in IMS, which is a group that focuses on standards, and that is contents of, uh, standards around content and how that gets transitioned. And so, one of the standards that we participate in is common cartridge. So, regardless of what you're doing and where you're transitioning. Um, we don't want to be gatekeepers and, and hold your content. So that's why we've developed our content to be exported in a common cartridge format. So, you know, I would hate it, break my heart. <laughs> uh, but, <laughs> but in the case that that happens, you know, we focus on standards because it's your content and you should be able to do what you want with it. Yeah, so the question is talking about the new instructor experience. <clears throat> um, and so what you saw there was kind of a, a guide that has been brought into the experience. So what we want to do is, is really walk that, te that new teacher through the process of setting up their course. Uh, so they're coming in, they're, as opposed to seeing uh, multiple paragraphs about what modules are, we're trying to show them, look, this is a place that you can bring content in. We're trying to illustrate that through images, um, through the layout, and then we have this uh, additional guide that is um, that can come in and out. We call it a context tray, and that has additional information um, about what modules, the purpose of modules are, some information on how to use it, and and also direct. Uh, I think there's directions to the guides for how you can uh, further how tos for Canvas, and uh, this is just something that we're like one of the first implementations of what, of what we're looking to do to make uh, empty states and new teachers be able to have um, an easier transition and onboarding onto campus. So look for more. <laughs> So the question is, is rubrics a uh, part of um, quizzes next? And uh, the information I have right now is that that's not going to be a part of it. <laughs> I'm glad that you guys all feel comfortable being honest. <laughs>
so I'm not looking at the old stuff when a new quarter starts. I know they're both different things, but they're both related to the end of a quarter, start of a new quarter, and trying to set the pins up for the next quarter. I wonder if you guys know anything about that kind of stuff. Yeah, so we've got a couple questions in there. Um, it's really, the crux of it is, you know, I'm using the same content sem uh, semester after semester. Um, I am looking for a way to make that easier when I bring that content in. Uh, there's, whether it's published or not, having to go and un unpublish everything that was published. Um, and there was another part to it. Uh, it was uh, the in inbox messages, archiving all of them. That okay. Yeah, the messages and discussions. And so um, a couple things I would say that Blueprint Courses does um, help a lot with uh, creating an established course that you may want to have and then um, kind of using that as a way to push that content to uh, subsequent courses. I also know that we've recently made changes to um, the way in which uh, SCORM uh, goes, gets copied and we're definitely looking at making that process easier. Um, I know that we're uh, con considering uh, things for external tools that we know are used a lot. So uh, it's great to hear that feedback. Uh, those are some of the things that I know that we have done or are looking at, and um, it's great to hear that. Um, and I can, uh, some of that relates to stuff that I work on, and uh, otherwise I know the exact person to tell. So thank you for sharing that. And I think Renee has something on that too. So. Yeah, I was going to add that your default course settings is actually an idea already in the community. You could go in and search for it and vote on it. And then also the way that you're bringing in your course, it shouldn't be bringing the messages or the discussions in um, like complete discussions. So maybe try a different transition, do a copy course instead of an import through an through a content cartridge. I, I heard. Oh. Our <laughs> I was going to say, there's directions in the community on how to select all and delete them all, so yeah. find that as well. Okay, thank you. <laughs> What's the current status of uh, Office 365 into Canvas? I'm asking this question because um, since there is uh, some issue with submitting assignments from 365 into Canvas, and another issue is embedding files in Canvas because a lot of uh, colleges here have a Microsoft account for business, so you, you cannot share the files outside of a domain. Yeah, so a uh, question here is about Office 360 and Canvas. Um, and uh, what's, what's happening with the integration and uh, specifically around submitting assignments and uh, as... Embedding. What's that? Embedding files. And embedding. So um, good question. So uh, Office 365 right now is in a beta. Um, so we released that early or end of last year. Uh, right now it's going through um, the process of everybody, you know, uh, test driving it, seeing, you know, breaking it as much as possible. Um, it, which has been fun um, anytime we're doing that. Uh, so, you know, we have a team that is actively working on uh, triaging the bugs and uh, addressing those. Um, hopefully we've made some things easier around uh, authorizing accounts and submitting accounts. Um, I know that there was some uh, initial technical difficulty, like technical limitations on embedding uh, documents. Uh, but I think that we have figured out how to do that now and are considering, uh, uh, based on the beta, uh, the beta feedback from our users, we will be looking at like what are the next steps for how we want to develop those integrations. So perfect time to be, um, you know, providing content to your admins or within the community for us because uh, our product managers go through there and are uh, actively reading those as they are considering how to improve uh, our product. So, great questions. So, still in beta, and um, we'll be for a little while longer as we work out the kinks. There was a lot of discussion maybe two years ago here about uh, about en end of life stuff for courses, like what a, what an end of life process would look like, or, or how that would uh, how end courses and, and kind of restructuring that, and then it, it kind of dissipated. After that, I'm wondering if that's where what the status of that is like. Yeah, that's really hard 
and you want to deal with it or is it coming or <laughs> well hopefully there's nothing too hard that we want <laughs> if it's bothering you guys we want to know <laughs> um, I know that there's some stuff around concluding courses um, that I've heard of. Yeah, this might be one that Renee knows a little bit better. No. Okay. <laughs> All I know is I've heard discussion like exploratory stage maybe of, of seeing what you guys are saying and getting some feedback from you, but nothing more. If you want, we can certainly chat afterwards. I'm happy to um, learn more about it and can always take that back to the team. Any other questions? Oh. Oh, you guys are stumping me. Um, I glad to hear it. I don't have an answer for that one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Renee's saying that we'll get something into the community, and uh, yeah, that's great. Thank you. Oh, the question is about embedding images uh, in discussions. Yeah. Students being able to do it. Oh. There's a very popular community idea, so keep adding to it. That's what I can say. <laughs> I ask a question about service cloud. About service cloud? Yeah. Cases uh. and cases. Uh, it's often the case that students will report and it seems like in my behavior, in my experience of behavior, that when you try to merge tickets, it just deletes the tickets and it doesn't bring over the content that you may have to apply to the user first message into those subsequent cases or those merged cases. Is that you look at or yeah, um, so the question is about when uh, admins submit uh, service cases to instructor, or is it with the student? The students. Okay. You know, that that's not something I'm quite familiar with. On my side, I know that I get to see all the cases that are attached to a ticket. If I'm looking at something and addressing it, I can see all the uh, cases that are involved with it. So, but I couldn't tell you whether or not what's happening on the student side. Feel free to chat with me afterwards, though. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you so much, you guys. We really appreciate your time uh, letting us share with you our vision, and we look forward to continuing the conversation. Thanks.